himself, Dr. James Mwangi, CEO, Equity Group. And we're always asking you the question, are you a meba? I've got 14 and a half million and counting in nine African countries. And Dr. here will say, DRC is, is where you're biggest, huh? Outside of Kenya. Outside of Kenya. Sure. DRC. DLC. And uh, I trust in five years, DLC will challenge Kenya for wow. top position. Is it because of numbers, population, or...? Uh, two aspects. One, only 5% of the population have bank accounts. Mm. Two, we are dealing with 100 plus million people and a very rich country in resources. Mm. So essentially, if we empower them, as we empower them, we expect them to grow extremely fast. However, uh, we, Kenya will take that challenge. Uh, they're saying, yeah, they will assist. Mm -hmm. And the other countries where you are uh, also uh, big we are, uh, very big in uh, Luanda and very big in uh, uh, Uganda. And now we, we are in Tanzania, we are headed to Mozambique, we are headed to Zambia. And of course, we have opened uh, the rep office in uh, Ethiopia. I was about to say, Dr. Ari, that is like the last frontier. If you, if you can crack Ethiopia, then you, you're good to go. Who we'll certainly crack Ethiopia? Well, look at the population uh, uh, in Ethiopia. It's purely uh, our people. Essentially, uh, the southern side of it extends uh, all the way to the, uh, the communities. So essentially, we understand Madela, Moyale, uh, Masabit are some of our best performing branches, suggesting we understand the aspirations of that community. Absolutely. Okay. Something that's very close to your heart, Dr. Ari, is a program called Wings to Fly. And when you, and I see you're already smiling because this thing, you birthed this thing, you, you, you ran with this thing, and it's starting to produce results. Tell us about it. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff. It's true that uh, the equity leadership program and Wings to Fly program speaks to my heart. And uh, there's nothing really I'm proud of uh, that I've ever done. Uh, than, uh, than that. Two aspects of uh, our children. The first one is to identify the most gifted one. Through national selection, we take the best boy and the best girl in every region we, uh, we operate in after uh, their form, for the form exam. And we coach and mentor them for a year. We give them an, an annual internship and then send them to university. We've been very successful that uh, today we can show 14,000 kids who have passed uh, uh, through our hearts. Mm. And essentially we are saying, because it's national selection, or the best in school, most likely they will be the, uh, the best in uh, every step of their life. And nationally, they will become our future leaders. We want to influence them. We, because we have come to appreciate an organization, a country, a community can never be better than its leaders. So we want to give that generation a lot of exposure, a lot of knowledge, and we want to give them the best opportunities that they are. So essentially now we ensure that at least 10% of all those uh, kids that we get every year, uh, we get them uh, scholarships globally. So today, we have 519 of those scholars in Ivory schools. And essentially then, uh, with uh, 32 of them in Harvard, 28 in Stanford, 26 in Yale, we have given them the best education, the best exposure, and the possibility of having the best networks they could have and globalize to them. And hopefully by the time they turn 40, mm -hmm. uh, they will have taken their rightful position in our society. And hopefully then our society will reflect that enlightened leadership that we shall have created. However, we observed that um, all of them came from the middle class. We said, we thought intelligence is the evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. What happened to um, those at the bottom of the pyramid? Mm -hmm. And we realized that um, well, free education played a very significant role of um, making education accessible. The paying secondary education became a barrier to the very gifted, but from very humble families. And then we said, we'll give them wings to fly from the uh, free primary education to free secondary and literary free university education. So we developed the Wings to Fly program. We don't give them scholarship, we give them to the community. And the community gives the most deserving of their best kids. The only thing is they must be in the top five percentile. Society has been very kind. 
we realize 87 percent of all those kids are orphans so it means the mechanism is working of selecting the most deserving the second thing is that uh, we didn't miss it in uh, picking the most talented because 84 percent of all those kids are able to transit to university so in between when they finish we bring them uh, those who get a's and a's uh, minus in total we bring about 700 kids to the bank and uh, within a year they will have earned every month uh, for, uh, 40,000, that's uh, 400,000, and they're able to pay their way here to public uh, university. Mm -hmm. This year's cohort that, uh, of 84 who flew out of the country, 38 were from the wings to fly. So we've given uh, orphans equal opportunities like Mike. It's purely now on the uh, meritocracy. It's what can you do? I'm really glad that the way we did this program have touched the hearts of many. And essentially, I'm seeing this um, program scaling, uh, and I'm confident uh, I'll be able to see through 60,000 wings to fry kids uh, through their, uh, uh, their university mm. education, courtesy of friends, and institutions that are demand what we have done. Does that include ma people like MasterCard or institutions uh, like Mister MasterCard, the USA, mm -hmm. DFID, mm -hmm. the World Bank has come big, and the Kenyan government has responded. Uh, uh, and we are very proud that uh, the Kenyan government can say you are doing a good job here. We want to be partners uh, with you, lead a public-private partnership. Yeah. yeah. When that playing field is leveled, Daktari, do you see these kids, these future leaders? Are they? Do they cope as well as any other kids from anywhere else? We've been amazed uh, how well they perform. As you say, uh, we said the wings to fry, 84% of them get admitted to university. The average national transition uh, from secondary to university is only 13%. So they're performing, outperforming the national average nearly seven times. That is how good uh, those kids uh, are performing. And like you say, when they turn 40, they turn 40 uh, with the exposure we are giving them, with the uh, coaching and mentoring, with the inspiration. And we see uh, when they go to universities, they, they, are, they are the leaders in the universities. While in secondary school, 89% uh, of all our uh, wings to fry kids are prefects. So essentially, you can see they have started practicing. And we hope they will not forget. Uh, uh, the bridge that took them to this promised mm -hmm. land, yeah. and they'll keep the bridge open so that uh, we'll continue. And the best way is to influence policy, such that we are not doing it at the institutional level, we are doing it at the national level, ensuring every child has an equal opportunity. Mm. So you are basically the tomboyer of the 2000s. It's the, it's the members who are tomboyers. <laughs> they have enabled us to have this platform. <laughs> right. And every member should be very, very proud and take a claim on these wings to fry now, we have 16,000. We're sure we will be able to see up to 60,000 uh, because uh, we have lined up uh, partners. Uh, the leadership uh, program has uh, 14,000. So we are talking about already we have 30,000 yeah. kids through yeah. our, and growing throughout the program and in one generation. That's the most amazing thing. 60,000 kids within two generations, within 20 years. Yeah. That would be significant. Yeah. Impact, yeah. It'll be a game changer. And particularly when we give them the, the exposure they are given. And amazingly, we can't get uh, a wings to fry kid who went to university who doesn't have a job. Simply because that, uh, the internship that uh, they get into equity, the training and uh, uh, development, the mentally uh, places them uh, uh, higher, uh, a, le a level higher than kids of their age. Yeah. Dr. Tari, what keeps you going? I mean, you know, you're there you're in New York one minute, you know, in Japan the next minute, you're all over the place, and you still have the energy. What, is it, what keeps you going? Is seeing every day lives being changed. Every day I see a life transformed. And I say, yeah, that one. We we'll build Africa by transforming one life at a time. And essentially now with 14 million people are drinking from the fountain of equity bank, the possibility of transforming lives in um, thousands of uh, people is real. Yeah. And so I'm very, very privileged to be able to observe this. And that's really what inspires me and uh, uh, 
gives me the energy to wake up every day mm. and uh, to serve the members. But at some point, you're going to want to walk away from it all, Dr. Tari. We all do. You want to walk away from it all. What's your exit plan? Uh, essentially, of course, the commercial side. Uh, we have trained and developed very young people. Uh, now we have almost 13 managing directors in, in equity. So essentially, we have developed the human capital. I think where we need to still do more is in the foundation. So, Jeff, when I retire from the bank, yeah. I think I will seek a job with a foundation. <laughs> And we can scale the wish to fry program, the leadership program, help you. and we can do entrepreneurship uh, using JF uh, Life. Yeah, absolutely, we we'll yeah. just call it Oh My. Oh My. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dari, the other day Kenya was voted, I think, number 59 in the world uh, when it comes to ease of doing business. No, it's 56 oh, now. Pardon me. 56. And I'm glad because uh, I've seen it as uh, for chairman of Vision 2030. We have moved from yeah. position 132 yeah. to now 56. Yeah. What does that say about the economy, Dr. Ari? Are we on the right track? I think we are on the light track in terms of policies. We have done very well. Uh, we are doing the light policies. The country is becoming globally competitive. At that ranking, we are the, among the top uh, three best countries in, uh, in Africa. So essentially, we are becoming the magnet that attracts a global capital and investment. And we have seen how many companies have relocated their African headquarters uh, to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And we can see the buzz. We may say the uh, private sector is not performing well but when you look at the corporate level when you look at uh, the infrastructure level the country is performing very well yeah so essentially uh, this will propel us to do even better and i hope particularly if we address this issue of things like interest rates appropriate and ensure fads flow to the private sector because at the moment the growth is purely uh, supply driven by infrastructure we need the demand side to work and demand can only do if the uh, credit is flowing adequately uh, to the private enterprises. Absolutely. Dr. Ari, there's no way I can let you go without asking you a question. Uh, Safaricom just turned 19 years old the other day. For the very first time, they've appointed a Kenyan local CEO, Peter Ndegwa. Your thoughts, Dr. Ari? One, I would like Lile to uh, applaud and uh, Lile congratulate the board of Safaricom uh, in recognizing uh, that uh, our, our Kenya is of age and it has sons and daughters who can manage uh, Kenyan enterprises. That's really uh, very important. The second thing is that uh, hopefully Peter Degwa, who I'm very privileged to have been in CRAS AP, uh, uh, MP together for six years, uh, who understands the intricacies of our society and hopefully will tweak uh, the offering as I say, uh, so that uh, Safaricom can continue to have greater impact into our society. Yeah. So he'll make an impact. He'll, he'll, he'll do well. I've no doubt. It's mm. a man I know, and I'm proud to be associated with him. And I want to congratulate him and uh, thank him for leaving Europe to come and take a job back home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. And the others should take a leaf from him, right? Other Absolutely. Kenyan experts. The diaspora, diaspora. now, yeah. at that time as they left, uh, it was a brain drain. Yeah. Now, uh, Peter has shown what uh, brain drain can be reversed mm. to become a uh, brain gain. Brain drain becomes brain gain. Yeah. Hey, Dr. Tari, deep, deep. Well done, Dr. Tari. Good to see you. Thank you very much, yeah, Jeff, and always. thank you for having me today. Thank you. And to the members, thank yes. you for continuing to support uh, our dream and our aspiration as our people. And if you're not a member, be a member. Please, we invite you. <laughs> you are missing out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. James Wang is CEO Equity Group. 35 years and counting, and only 15 years as a bank. Thanks for pointing that out. Mm. Wow. You know, if it's Wednesday, it's all about those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other. J-K-L. Thanks so much for being a part of this show, folks, where there's always insights. We always learn something new. We always tell you what's going on. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night. Good luck. And God bless this great nation of ours.